everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're checking out the new Bebop drone from Parrot, and this is a really fun little product. So if you're not familiar with Parrot, they uh, came out with this product called the AR drone a few years ago, uh, which was just, for me, mind-blowing, because it was a relatively inexpensive, uh, take it out of the box and fly it uh, drone, which had a camera that could record you know, 720p video. It was actually pretty good. It still is pretty good. Uh, but this new one is just light years uh, ahead of the old one, and you'll see in a few minutes with some sample footage that I took. Uh, but look how much smaller the new one is compared to the old one. It's also better built also. So the old one was really filled up with a lot of styrofoam. The entire body of the uh, drone was made from styrofoam that got uh, beat up pretty good over the years here in my backyard. As you can see, I got a lot of tape holding it together. Uh, the new one has styrofoam on it still, but a lot of it is high impact plastic. So I think it's going to uh, probably have a better lifetime uh, than the old one will. Another important feature is the camera on this. And we covered this a little bit at CES. Uh, they've done something amazing with this camera and you're gonna see that uh, when we play the sample footage back in a few minutes. But let's take a look at the hardware and see what makes this thing tick. So this is the base level Bebop configuration. It costs $499 at most retailers. Uh, you do though get two batteries for the price, so that's something, right? Uh, and what's nice is that you can let one charge while the other one flies the drone. Uh, you get about 15 or 20 minutes of flight time depending on uh, conditions with it. So not too bad and you can always uh, swap the batteries out pretty quickly in between flights. So that is a good thing to have there. Um, there also are these little bumpers that they give you that you can just attach to the side of the drone and this prevents uh, the drone from destroying your home when you're flying it around inside. Although uh, I found that toddlers and dogs are not big fans of these things flying around the house and my wife wasn't too crazy about it either. But you can fly it indoors uh, with these little bumper guards on here to prevent uh, too much destruction within your home. Uh, they also give you some extra rotors uh, in the box as well. So if you do happen to break something, you have a few extra spare parts included too. So it's kind of a nice thing. They give you a little bit more than they used to. The one thing that I don't like is how the battery connects. You have to pull out this little plug here. They have a little string you can pull uh, and then you attach it to the battery like so and I was hoping that it would be a little bit simpler than that because on the on the wall charger which is what they give you to charge the batteries with uh, you just have to slide it in like that and you're done but this one you got to connect the little cable uh, and then uh, line everything up and then slide it in so not too bad but a little bit more work than I would like and I'm just a little bit nervous about having to pull on a, on a plug every time I want to attach a battery uh, it's got a nice velcro strap here to keep everything together and you'll notice here that it, it moves a little bit this is actually by design. This helps with the camera because while this is flying, these little rotors are turning and uh, creating some vibrations. So this helps with the stability of the camera. And you'll see uh, on the footage in a few minutes, it is remarkably stable. I mean, just uh, light years beyond the old one. I'm so impressed with that. And you'll see that uh, on some sample footage. Now, there are two ways to download video and photos from the Bebop. You can connect a USB cable to the back here and plug it into your computer. They give you the cable in the box. Uh, or you can transmit those files wirelessly to the phone or tablet that's controlling the drones. If you're out in the field somewhere and you got your phone with you controlling it, you can download a video and then uh, turn around and upload it back to YouTube or other social media platforms. On the iPhone, at least, it'll dump it off uh, into your photo uh, gallery, your little photo uh, roll there, and you can edit the video, trim it, and do some other things. But uh, the cool thing that we really need to spend some time on is that camera that takes those videos and photos. So what we're gonna do now is boot the drone up connect my iPad to it and you're going to see uh, just how stable this camera is and how really flexible it is despite the fact that it's fixed to the nose. So let's take a look and see how that works. All right, I've got my drone connected to my iPad via Wi-Fi. You will hear a bit of a fan running and that is the cooling fan on the drone because its electronics are pretty condensed in there. So uh, it does make a little bit of noise even when it is not flying. Now I want to show you this camera. This is just remarkable. So this is a fixed camera. There's no moving parts in the camera yet I can tilt it uh, up and down here on my iPad as I move things around here. It's just remarkable, uh, especially the range that you can pick up with this camera. And how it does it is through uh, some software tricks as well as a huge sensor and having a pretty big fisheye lens on the front here as well. So what's happening is uh, in software, it's taking this fisheye image and then uh, making a standard 1080p 16 by nine non fisheye image uh, through uh, just some processing, which is pretty remarkable. So you can see when I lift the drone up, I'm able, even though the camera is facing straight forward, uh, it's able to film the bottom or the top of my desk here, which is pretty remarkable. Uh, and then I can, of course, uh, while the drone is in the air, uh, pan that camera around and everything. Now you'll see it's kind of, you know, pausing and getting a little jumpy here. That's just the connection to the iPad. Uh, when it's recording, you have a much better image. So here you go. Here's some sample footage. Uh, we flew the drone at my 
office uh, towards the roof here and you can see the footage now from the drone. Look how stable this is. This is just remarkable coming off of a, a take out of the box and fly device. You can even see here it got a little too close to the roof and it detected that and it uh, gave itself a little bit more altitude to avoid crashing into the solar panels and everything else there. So just look how stable it stays. It's really uh, pretty impressive that it doesn't get, you know, even though it's getting knocked around in the wind a little bit, the camera is able to keep itself pretty steady. Now I'm going to fly back towards the fence line here and then just spin the drone around and look, just watch how stable the horizon stays on this. It's just pretty incredible. It almost looks like it's on a huge tripod, uh, which is pretty cool. So here's another shot I took, um, just kind of ho hovering it in place and we're going to walk below it. It almost looks like it's just landed on something, but it's not. It's hovering there, which is, and the wind, the wind was blowing a little bit too. So pretty neat uh, image quality there. The image quality, as you can see, it's good, like much, 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 much better than the old one. Uh, it's not probably as good as maybe a more expensive device that you would plug in like a GoPro, you know, one of the new GoPro cameras or something, but uh, it's still pretty darn good, especially considering all of this image processing is taking place uh, inside of the drone's little computer, which is pretty cool. Uh, you might see a little bit of flickering while this uh, drone was flying around, and that's because uh, we, it was trying to adjust the exposure based on all the snow and the contrast that I had there, but you can manually set the camera so it doesn't do that uh, change of exposures. So you can set an exposure level, uh, send it up, and then do your thing with it. Uh, so here it is flying, and this is us adjusting the, uh, the camera pan here. So this is the digital panning that we're doing here while the drone is facing forward. So you can see it does uh, have a decent range of motion there, and moving the camera doesn't really impact things too much uh, either. It is a little jumpy. I'm not sure if it's because of the Wi-Fi connection or if that's just how the, the panning works while you're recording. And one feature that is very underutilized right now is the onboard GPS. So uh, there is a software update coming to the app on the uh, mobile devices that will allow you to plot out a course on a map and have the drone follow that course. Uh, that is due to be released in April of 2015, so next month at the time that I'm shooting this. And I think that will be a pretty cool upgrade to have on the drone. The only problem is, from what I'm reading, it's going to be an in-app purchase. So it's not enough that you spend $500 on the drone. You're going to have to go out and do an in-app purchase to add functionality that really should have been there from the beginning. So that's the one thing I think they can maybe rethink a little bit, that if people are spending this much on a drone, uh, to withhold a feature that it clearly has the hardware for, uh, is a little bit aggravating to me. I think it'd be nicer if they just provided that uh, free of charge to everyone. Uh, one other thing I wanted to show you is this kind of the limit of the image sensor. This is an image that I slowed down a little bit. What you're going to see on the top right and left-hand corners is kind of a little bit of a black vin uh, vignette kind of working its way into the image, and that is kind of the end of the sensor. So uh, what we had on there was uh, basically having the drone flying stable and then uh, picking up the very top of what uh, the lens and the sensor was picking up. So it gets to a point where it really can't uh, keep things completely stable anymore because it's running out of sensor to uh, adjust for all the shakes and vibrations going on. But really, you've got a tremendous range of motion on this camera, and it's just remarkable. Again, for something that you can spend 500 bucks on, uh, take it out of the box, connect it to your iPad or iPhone or Android device, send it out on a flight, and you're going to get great results. I mean, literally, this is the first 15 minutes that you just saw of me playing with this is what we just got. Uh, on this video here. So really just a cool product, really fun to play with kids and stuff. I know that this is going to be something you want to do uh, with supervision with kids just because uh, it is breakable, it is expensive, and of course uh, you want to be very responsible about uh, where you fly it. But I have to say, as far as drones go and as far as consumer-friendly drones go, uh, this one is pr pretty much the best one I've seen uh, so far. So I'm really, really impressed with that. So that is the Parrot Bebop Drone, and this is Lon Seib, and we're going to do more with this, so if you've got questions, uh, definitely ask. There will be more to explore, and I'm hoping for some better weather, too, so I'll uh, upload some uh, better footage in the next couple of days as well. This is Lon Seib, and thanks for watching.